You guys are good today? You guys ready for Christmas? Celebrating the birth of Christ. I love that. Next week we're going to have a couple of us up here singing and candlelight service come and be a part of that. Jessica Rose is singing a song. I'll be singing a song. And I think we're going to do one together, all of us. So come next week. Yeah. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to turn to Acts chapter 8. We'll be reading through some of chapter 9. Chapter 8, we're going to start verse 26. I'm not going to start yet. Guys, I want to talk to you today about encounters. I want to talk to you today about us having an encounter with him. It's very, very important that you and I have an encounter with Jesus. I don't think we can walk the fullness of the yes that he has for us unless we walk into an encounter with him. There's many people in the Bible that have had encounters with Jesus. They've had these life-changing, revelatory encounters with him. I was thinking of the song Dyson was singing, that third song he was singing about the fire. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they walked through a fire, and they were not afraid. They were thrown into a fire where the people that threw them in were burned up. But these guys were thrown into a fire, and they were not afraid. They saw something that we haven't seen. They had an encounter that we need to have. Because I don't know how, I mean, they didn't even fight being thrown into fire. How many of us, of us would be thrown into a fire and not fight to get our way out of the fire? These guys are just like, do whatever you got to do. Do whatever you got to do because I know what's on the other side. To have that kind of mindset to know that we know that we know that Jesus is Lord and Savior of our life. I think a lot of people, maybe in this church, even this body, even come to the, to the house of the Lord only because they're afraid of what's going to happen to them when they die. And they've lost joy. They don't have the joy. They ride on a roller coaster of emotions and feelings. They take them up one day and down the next, and up one day and down the next. And that's why I t when I text you that, it was like, don't go up and down. Your emotions are going to, but, you, but the joy is going to stay the same. And it's going to grow and grow and grow as you dig deeper into him. To where when a time comes that we are cast into the flames, we're going to say, whatever you got to do, do it. When our heads are being cut off, do whatever you got to do. The disciples went through this stuff. They knew something. They had something. They had an encounter that we haven't experienced. I want that kind of an encounter. You know, I died and went to heaven and saw Jesus' face. And he brought me back to life. But I literally still think that I would struggle if someone was going to cut my head off. If someone was going to throw me into flames, I think that I would still struggle. So I'm asking the Lord for myself as well to give me an encounter that's out of this world that it doesn't matter if someone comes up to me and says, hey, I'm going to take your life. Well, take it. Because I know I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking, Lord, what would I think? What would go through my mind? And what and I literally thought what would go through my mind was would be, um, is my wife going to be okay? Who's going to watch after my kids? What's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? What's going to happen with this? That would go through my mind as someone, I'm getting ready to get my head cut off or whatever it's going to be. These guys didn't care because they knew Jesus had charge of all of it. Their families, their lives, their situations. He knew that Jesus had charge of every bit of their life. Knowing that he is the best and he makes the best decision for us and he's right always, all the time, he's right. 
we have to have that kind of encounter to fulfill the yes that God has for us. Listen, there's going to be ups and downs. I'm not going to lie to you. When you come to Christ, it's not going to be all roses. It's going to be guns and roses. I think I was a band or something one time. But it's not going to be all roses. It really is not. I, I, I'd lie to you if I said that. But there can be a joy that passes all understanding that we walk in in the midst of the guns and roses, in the midst of the ups and downs of our life. There can be a joy that, that radiates in us. And it's because we have an encounter with him. The encounter is so valuable. And I want to start reading here at verse 26. This is talking about Philip, and he, um, now listen, you're going to have to listen to the words because I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I want you guys to go later and go in deep into this. So it's Acts chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which is down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. So he went, he arose and he went. He did what he said to do. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, which is a man that has no gender, a eunuch, um, or the parts, I guess. Um, look up what eunuch means. Um, a eunuch of greater authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasures. So he was in charge of all her treasures, all her possessions. And had come to Jerusalem to worship. So he came on this carriage to worship in Jerusalem. And on his way back from there, and sitting in the chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet, and the Spirit of the Lord said to Philip, now see, an angel had already told Philip to go to this place, so he's being obedient. The Lord said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading Eli the prophet Elijah, and he said, do you understand what you are reading? And every time I read that, I'm going to see... Uh, I'm going to see um, Pastor Karen Smith shaking Todd and saying, do you understand? And I know that's what she was saying. She was saying, or he was saying, do you understand what you are reading right now? And this, and this eunuch, and, this, and, he, and he said to him, he said, how can I unless someone guides me? How can I understand unless somebody shows me? That's where you and I come into play. Because there are going to be people that are going to have an encounter with Jesus himself, and there's going to be people that are going to have an encounter with you. That's why we need to be straight up right with God, because when they encounter you, they need to encounter him. That's why when you have that um, encounter with Jesus, it sticks with you, it stays with you, it stays upon you. And when you speak to other people, they get to receive an encounter because of your knowledge of the word or because what you what you can carry and show them. He said, unless someone shows me or guides me. And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. And the place of scripture where they were reading was this. It was in Isaiah 53. I'm going to go a little bit before that. It's, it starts at 7, but I'm going to go at 5. It says, but he was pierced. This is what they were reading. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. He's talking about Jesus. See, this is, this is before Jesus even came. This scripture is talking about Jesus, about our Lord and Savior before it even happened. Here it is talking about it. He says, he was crushed for our iniquities, chastened for our well-being. And by his scourging, we are healed. By the beatings that he got, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. Listen, our own way of thinking is not where God wants us to be. Doing our own thing is not what he wants us to be. He wants us to be dead center of his will. Dead center of that yes that he's called us to do with the encounter that he has for us, that we can walk in perfect will of Father and do what he's called us to be. But it says, in his own way. But the Lord, listen, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon himself. All of our sin he took 
on himself. And this is what the eunuch is reading there. He said, and he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did, they did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before the shears. So he did not open his mouth. I'm thinking of Peter right here. You remember when Peter denied Christ three times? He denied him three times. And on the third time that he denied him, the cock crowed twice. The second time. Listen, I want to teach you something here. There was a town crier in those days that was also called the cock. He was a town crier. He would cry out in the morning when the, when the lamb would come by in the morning. He would cry out declarations of praise. He would call those things out because the lamb was going for a sacrifice in the morning. And then the evening, another lamb would come through because it was a continual sacrifice. And in the evening, the lamb would come through. And, it would sac- and they, they, the town crier would call out again. And Jesus said to Peter, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times. You remember Peter said, no, Lord, I'll never deny you. I'll never do this. But here we are. Peter's getting ready to have this encounter with Jesus. Jesus walks by. Listen to the town crier calling out praises and declarations. And Jesus walks by as the sacrificial lamb. He walks by. The one that's going to pay the price forever for all of us. Can you imagine Peter looking up at him going, and that what he felt inside of his heart, knowing that the cock was calling out declarations of praise as his Lord and Savior was walking by. When I read that, that's what I think of. That's what I picture. That's why just that moment that Peter had, that encounter that he had that would change him forever. He didn't walk away. He didn't quit. That encounter changed him. He pondered upon that encounter. And he watched his Lord hang on a cross to die for you and me. So the eunuch is talking about, so the reading is, so Peter's reading this. He's like, man, do you know what you're reading? And he's reading this over to him and he's explaining to him. And he said, and he said to Philip, um, I ask you, who is this talking about? Who is Isaiah talking about in this passage? Is he talking about himself? Who's he talking about? And that's when Peter starts ministering to him. That's where we come in. When someone asks us the question, who do you live for? Why is your life like, like why is your life, you're, I see the stuff you're going through, and you're like, just like, like Dyson this morning, man, you're going through all this stuff. And he's like, hey, it's cool. It's all good. They're going to see that on you. They're going to see you going through trials and tribulations. They're going to see on you. Something that you have, that peace, that joy that passes all understanding. And they're going to want to know how do you get through that? How do you get through the day with the death in life? All the deaths, all the stuff, all the sickness, all all the stuff that we go through. How do you get through the day? We need to be ready to tell them how to get through the day because Jesus is how we get through the day. Through the joy, through the peace. And he preached Jesus to him in verse 35. And it says, now as they went down, now you know he's talking about water. No, he was talking about baptisms because here he says, in 36, it says, Now they went down to the road, and they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here's some water. What hinders me from being baptized? So they stop. It says, and Philip said, this is what he said. Listen, this is where most people miss it. Then Philip said, If you believe with all all of your heart, not just a little bit of your heart, not just, well, I'm going to believe long enough to get in or I'm going to believe long enough for the church to give me a little bit of peace. Um, If you believe with all of your heart, that means when you say with all of your heart, you're giving him all of your life. When you believe with all of your heart. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. From that one simple encounter that he had with Philip, one encounter, all it takes is one encounter with you to teach about Jesus, and they can be the same, in the same position. 
if you believe with all your heart. And he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Guys, we have a job to do. We have a commission. We have a place that we're supposed to walk in. And he commanded this chariot to sit still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Listen to this. I love this part. Because there's been times I have like been, I, I've been, I've been in my dreams and my thoughts and my just ministering to somebody. And then all of a sudden I'll come to myself and like, what just happened? Where was I at? What was going on? You ever, anybody ever been there? You ever like been like out of body? Like, no, but you guys need an encounter. You guys need to have an encounter with Jesus because this is what happened. Look at him. What he says was, and when the, and find this. It says in verse 39, it says, Now when he came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord had caught Philip away. So the eunuch saw him no more. And he rejoiced and went on his way. He didn't even think about it. He comes up out of the water, Philip's gone. Where's Philip at? He's over in another city here ministering to other people. So I might be reading a little bit into that. But for me, that's where it takes me. That's where it takes me, where we're seeing Philip being caught away, the eunuch going, well, there was a man here talking to me. That doesn't even matter now because I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I know him, and I'm rejoicing. And he walks away rejoicing. And then in chapter 9, listen, we're talking about encounters this morning. And in chapter 9, it says, then Saul, you guys know who Saul was. It says, Saul, still breathing threats of murder, against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus. So if he found anyone that was in the way, that a believer, that he would be able to, man or woman, that he would be able to take them and bring them to Jerusalem. And so when he journeyed, he, in verse 3, he said, when he journeyed and came near to Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven, and then he fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Here Saul is having an actual encounter. The eunuch had an encounter with Philip. And in that encounter, he met Jesus. Saul is having an encounter with Jesus himself. Sometimes Jesus is going to give you an encounter, and sometimes you're going to get an encounter from man. Most of us have gotten an encounter from man that brought us to Jesus. Now we need to have an encounter with Jesus. The woman that went to the well, she had an encounter with Jesus himself. And she went back and told all the people in the city about the encounter that she had. And they went for themselves and had an encounter with Jesus. And they said to her, we no longer have to go off of your encounter, but we have our own. See, they saw something. These guys are having an encounter with Jesus. We need to have an encounter with Jesus. Some of us have had an encounter with man, and we've stopped there at that encounter. We stopped there. That's not, that's stopping short of what God has for you. That's stopping short of the yes that he has for you. Because you need to go on, and you need to go on past that, that Jason prayed for me, and I got saved at the altar, and I asked Jesus to come to my heart and live my life, to God, I need an encounter from you now. I need you to show me who I am. I need you to show me how real you are to me. That when I go to church, I'm not sitting in the back wondering in the back of my mind, is this really real? Why am I really here? What is really going on in my life? Is he really touching me? Is he really changing me? Is he really doing something in me? We need to have an encounter with him. Some of us are playing church. And I'm going to tell you this morning, there's people here this morning that are just scared that they're going to go to hell so they come to church. Because they live like a hell in the whole week. They live screaming and hollering at their wives. They live doing all this stuff that they're not supposed to do all week long. And then they come to church and put the smile on and put the good face on. Some of you argued all the way to church this morning. And then you walk through the door and meet Bob. You smile. Hey, what's up? Or meet the greeters out there. That's a facade. 
We need to get past that facade and get onto the real things of life. Get onto the real things that God has for us. There's a yes for every one of you. And that yes, listen, he called us to this city. He called us to the city. We'll get back here. He says, why are you persecuting me? And then he said, who are you, Lord? He recognized that it was a, someone of authority. And the Lord said to him, the Lord said to him, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks or the goads, the gourds, whatever these are. And he said, and he said, he was trembling and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? So he has an encounter with Jesus. The eunuch had an encounter with with Philip, and I believe that later he had an encounter with Jesus. He met him in the water. He had an encounter with Jesus. But this is Jesus actually talking to Saul here. And Saul says, recognizes that he's Lord. This is the same Saul. This is the same Saul that just that just had. What can I think of his name? Stoned to death. Steve. Stephen. That just had Stephen stoned to death in front of his family. I'm sure they were all around. And even Stephen had forgiveness in his heart. And he looked up and he saw the heavens open. This is the same Saul that was chasing after to kill the lives of those who followed Jesus. Now Jesus is saying to him, it is me. Jesus, who you're persecuting. And Saul says, Lord, what do you want me to do? He's called us all here for a reason, for a purpose. It's not by happenstance. We're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose this morning. It's the yes that he has for you. It's the encounter that he wants for you. Every one of you, if we will step in the yes that he has for us, what do you want us to do, God? I want you to go to Martinsville. I want, you to, I want you to love all my people. When he asked us, he said, when he asked us to come to the city, we got the name Life of Love. And there's four pillars that we stand on. One is love, and I feel like that we do well at that. Love on, on people. Identity. Teaching people about their identity of who they are and whose they are. That God created them before the foundation of the earth to be amazing sons and daughters. Freedom. We taught about freedom. People has been freed in the waters. People has been freed at the altars. People has been freed in the streets. And then we talk about encounters today. I believe that God wants every one of you to have an encounter with him today. And we're going to take a moment at the end of this and we're going to let him encounter you. Let him give you some revelation. Let him give you some. And all that spells love, identity, freedom, encounter spells life. As we love on the people of this region, to show them their identity, to bring them freedom, to fully encounter him and everything that he has for them. That's what he wants for you all this morning. That's what he wants for me. I'm asking for myself as well. God, I want an encounter with you. I want an encounter with you that, that in a way that nothing will change me. My finances won't change me. Whether up and down, whether I'm broke or rich, that won't change me. Whether I'm happy or sad, that won't change me. I want the encounter to change me to a position to know that I know that I know that I know he is who he says he is and I am who he says I am. That's what he wants for us. And when you have an encounter like that, all the cares of the world will melt away. 
they'll just melt away. Moms, dads, I know you have, some of you have struggles with your children. I got five boys, 12 grandkids. It's something every day. (laughs) But I've given them to him. God, you've given me a call. You've given me a purpose. I give my children to you. I give my grandchildren to you. Every time my grandkids call me, they talk to me about Jesus. Some of them want to know why their parents don't talk to them about Jesus. And I'm just like, you just pray for mom and dad. Just keep loving on them. Some of you have had children that are just out of the way. Listen, don't let that move you. You keep protecting them by your It. They're eventually going to come and go, you know what? Mom and dad was right. Because I did. I know all you did too. It's like your mom and dad said, do this, do this. Do this. You're like, no, 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 I'm going to do it my way. And then when you get to a little older, you go, yeah, you guys were right. Anybody ever said that to their parents? Yeah. I know I told my parents, yeah, you were right about on all of it. And they, and they weren't even Christians, but they still gave me good advice. <laughs> So today, I, I feel like today that, that um, let's stand. And there's so much packed into this, guys. If you guys read in and read on through this, there's just so much more. Saul's name was changed to Paul, and he went to a city, and he told him to go, and he was blind for three days, and goes and certain guy's going to meet him there and he goes to that certain guy and tells him, hey, there's going to come a guy to the city and he's going to be blind and that guy's going to say, man, that guy's persecuting all the Christians. We don't want to be around him. Disciples were all like freaked out. Like, we're not bringing this guy in our camp and he's going to kill all of us. The story goes on and on and on. Read it. It's a good story. But you'll learn from, something from it. You'll learn something from it. All these just are martyred. I believe they went out in a blaze of glory. Peter, that was always afraid of what people thought. You saw it when he denied him. Oh, you were with him. Oh, no, I wasn't with him. Yeah, you were with him. No, I wasn't. Finally, he cursed and said, I was not with him. But he knew he was. Reading your Bible is so valuable, guys. God has given us this word to eat, to chew on, to put it and insert it in every situation of our life. You know, you can take this and just insert it in your finances, insert it in your life with your children, insert it in in your life with your wives, your spouses, your boyfriend, girlfriends. You can just insert this in the, you know, change things. Because in this is an encounter for every one of us. I've been encountered so many times, and I want more, and I want more because I don't want to be stagnant. And I feel like kind of the church is in a stagnant position right now of it's the encounter. It's lost the encounter. We're just going week to week. We're like, hey, it's Sunday. All right, tomorrow's Monday. Another, another day of work. Get to Friday. I thank God it's a weekend. Like, I got to go to church Sunday because I might go to hell. We can't have those kind of, we can't think like that. We have to continually to think, God, I'm enjoying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm doing it again and enjoying it again until you take me home. There's people in my life I got to touch, people in my life I got to reach. We're all going to reach different people. We're not all going to reach the same people. Some of you might water, plant some seeds, and some of you might water, and some of you might reap what they planted and they water. That's all right. Reap it. Reap it well. Plant it well. Water it well. So what I want to do this morning, I'm going to ask the Lord. Let's go ahead and close your eyes. We don't have to close our eyes when we pray. We can pray with our eyes open because the Lord says, watch and see. Watch and see. Watch and pray. But I just want you to close your eyes for a minute because I want you to get inside and all the 
what's going on in the room, just clear that out of your head. Some of you might see a light right now, different colors. Some of you might be seeing purple, yellow, green, red. Just keep them close. Ask the Lord what that means. Some of you might be seeing a situation. Ask the Lord what that is. Father, we just thank you this morning for your people, for this body. God, we thank you right now for an encounter. Jesus, that they receive a revelatory encounter from you, Lord. God, that they receive an encounter from you. That they don't struggle through the week, God. That, that when you say old things pass away, it truly happens. Old things pass away and all things become new. Father, we're leaning on your word right now for that encounter with you, Jesus. We've all had an encounter with men. That's why we're here. Someone from someone from someone has talked about Jesus. Remember, they've lived it in front of them. They come to church. They've heard about this place from one way or another. But Father, I just thank you right now for an encounter. We've loved well. We've sought identity. We've sought freedom, Lord. And now we're seeking an encounter that we can fully live in you. In the yes that you have for us, knowing that you are an amazing God. Knowing that it doesn't matter what happens on this earth. It doesn't matter what happens, that heaven is our home. When we've, with all of our heart, believe that you are who you say you are. Father, I pray right now that you would touch them. Holy Spirit, that you would touch them. Take them on a journey right now, Lord. Take them on a journey in their mind, Lord. Show them heaven. Show them right now how you see them. God, not the person they see in the mirror, but show them how you see them right now. Lord, as their eyes are closed, as God, some of them might be seeing rivers and streams and flowers. Show them, Lord, how you see them right now. Let them see your face. Let them have that true encounter with you. God, we thank you so much. Jesus, you were born to die for us. To take the lashes that were to that were for us, to take the beating that was for us. You took it. That we could have heaven as an eternal home where you designed it to be to begin with. We thank you, Lord, for encounters. We thank you for the encounters that we see in the Bible with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The encounters.